welcome to Freddy Fazbear Pizza, a magical place for kids and grown-ups alike where fantasy and fun come to life. Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for damage to property or person. Upon discovery or damage or if death has occurred, a missing persons report will be filed within 90 days or as soon as property and premises have been thoroughly cleaned and bleached and carpets have been replaced. Sorry about that newbie. Company policy dictates that I give you the introductory greeting on the first night, and I wanted to get it out of the way. Anyway, let me give you a quick rundown of what your job entails, besides, you know, guarding the building. Um, so, uh, first order of business is to explain to you a few things about the animatronics in this particular establishment. Um, the animatronics have um, a sort of, uh, free roaming mode that we leave them on at night. Something about their servos locking up if they get turned off for too long and all that mechanical jazz. <coughs> now, I'm going to be honest with you, the only real risk to you as a night guard here, if any, is the animatronics themselves. I know that they might seem completely harmless, but they have a few glitches in their system that can make them a handful. Nighttime is an especially sensitive time for them. They can get a bit irritable and chaotic. Uh, do I blame them? No, if I had to perform those same songs for like 20 years and I was never washed, I'd probably be irritable too. Um, since the place is supposed to be empty at night, they don't really recognize people as people, but as, uh, um, costumeless endoskeletons. Now, since that's against the rules here at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, they'll probably try to forcefully stuff you inside of one of the suits we have in the back. Now, that, that wouldn't be bad, you know, it, it wouldn't be so bad, you know, if, if the suits themselves weren't filled with cross beams, wires, and electronic devices, uh, especially around the facial area. So, you can imagine how having your head forcefully pressed inside one of those could cause a bit of discomfort and death. just to make sure everyone's in their proper place, you know? Anyway, I wanted to emphasize the importance of using your door lights. There are blind spots in your camera view, and those blind spots just so happen to be right outside your doors. So if you can't find something, or someone, on your cameras, be sure to check the door lights. You might only have a few seconds to react. Not that you would be any danger, of course, I'm, I'm not implying that, legally. Also, keep in mind, your office is running off the power of a small generator. The owner wanted to cut costs on nighttime utilities, so you're stuck with a limited power supply. Closing doors and using lights uses up the generator's energy, and when its power is completely drained, the lights go out, but the doors remain stuck open, something to do with fire safety and, you know, against the fire code to have doors also lock in case of power loss. I've heard that they become more active in the dark, though, so, hey, I guess that's one reason not to run out of power, right? Um... Okay, now that we've got the training out of the way, um, tell me. Why did you decide to take this job? We used to leave this stuff to summer interns, but after what happened in 87 and all those missing person incidents, our applicants have been few and far between. Well, let's be fair though, they're, they're, things have been going downhill for the Fazbear Company way before the incident of 87. If I had to pinpoint exactly when the decline started, back in 83, 
Mr. Afton, who was one of the previous owners, lost his son in a serious accident in one of the locations. We had these suits called Springlocks. They're supposed to be wearable costumes that can turn into animatronics when they're not being used by the staff. You basically post all the animatronic parts to the sides and, you know, you could hand crank it and make room for a person to hop inside. The problem was that the spring locks were um, volatile and erratic movements or liquid, like water could set them off and have all the animatronic parts rush back in and impale whoever was inside. Um, there was a few incidents where this happened to staff members, but the suits, well, they were, they were only retired after the incident with the owner's son. Uh, a group of boys, including the boy's older brother, grabbed him and stuffed his head into one of the animatronics' mouths in what they thought was a silly prank. Uh, the problem was that the boy was crying and moving erratically, causing the spring locks to... Well, you could imagine. Did, did he survive? He was alive for a bit. Uh, he was rushed to urgent care, uh, but he only lasted a couple of days. Whole Afton family was distraught. It really took a toll on Mr. Afton. He used to be so in love with the franchise, but it seems like the accident turned him into a shadow of his former self. Uh, spring lot suits were retired after that. Now they just sit around in the back rooms of whatever locations are left. We actually have one of the spring locks here. It's in the parts and service room where we keep all the uh, costumes and animatronic beds. It's kind of like a Freddy costume except he's gold. But that one isn't technically a color swap Freddy. The character's name is Fred Bear and he came from a place called Fred Bear's Family Diner which was the original location before they you know, the, the, the franchise became Fazbear Entertainment. Some, <clears throat> some of the employees say that um, they can hear him twitch from time to time when they're not looking. I'm pretty sure it's just, uh, you know, spook. They're just spooked by stories of the incident of 83 and you know, hearing things that aren't there. Is there anything else happen? Well, I mean, if I had a nickel for every time one of the owner's children, you know, something happened to them, I'd have two nickels. But, you know, it's not, it's not much, but it's weird that it happened twice. Henry, um, who was the other owner, of the franchise, he he lost his daughter outside one of our establishments. Um, some of the kids locked her outside during a party, and some maniac attacked her in front of in front of the establishment since she was alone. They found her dead body in back of the building near one of the security puppets. probably left the station to go check on her, but got her too late. The security puppet. Well, uh, back in the day, we used to have cutting-edge tech in the field of robotics. It was the first attempt the company made at mixing security features into the animatronics. The result was a robotic puppet on strings who could use a system of rails on the ceiling to move around the restaurant and interact with kids, but also prevent them from leaving the restaurant without permission. But after the incident with Henry's daughter, they were labeled inadequate security measures and were relegated to regular entertainment duties. No, no, they they didn't they didn't find the murderer. Actually, things got really bad. Really quick after that. 
five kids went missing inside the restaurant. A few witnesses say they saw someone in a gold bunny costume taking kids to the back of the establishment. This is technically impossible though, since the only ones who had access to, um, you know, to the back where we kept uh, decommissioned spring logs were well, the staff, so I don't really know how they saw a golden bunny, you know. Oh yeah, I, f I forgot to mention, um, Fred Bear, he had a sidekick back in the family diner days called um, Bon the Bunny. Uh, it was basically Bonnie, but gold with a purple vest. Blue Bonnie came after, you know, during the franchise era. Uh, it's the only other type of Springlock suit we've had to spy it, uh, besides uh, Fred Bear's. But we keep it in a staff room that's not visible on your CCTV that staff members can, that they, they use to um, change into the costume. Uh, but as I was saying, those disappearances were they called the missing children's incident because, you know. Uh, and that was, well, it, 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 it would happen to be the final nail in the coffin for the partnership between uh, Henry and Afton. Afton would uh, leave the company and all the bad press to start two new companies. One called um, Circus Babies Pizza and Rentals and one called Afton Robotics. But the former never opened due to some sort of gas leak. Henry decided to shut down the restaurant and move forward with the company, putting the old animatronics in storage and opening up a new upscale location with new animatronics. Those ones were state-of-the-art. We used to call them the toys since they looked like old-school action figures uh, that Fazbear Entertainment sold during the golden age of Freddy's when they had the TV show and the action figures. They spent a small fortune on the new animatronics special recognition, advanced mobility, they even let them walk around during the day, but more importantly, they were all tied to some sort of criminal database so they could detect a predator a mile away. But even though um, they had everything in place to keep them, you know, to keep things from playing out like last time, someone got a hold of a bunny spring lock suit again. And there went five more kids. Except this time it was all in one day. Apparently there was a loophole around the whole facial recognition system. If you were a mask, there'd be no face to recognize, which was a major oversight for what was supposed to be state-of-the-art security system. The only people who would have had access to the suit and would even know about that particular loophole would have been a staff member and... I feel like that theory was confirmed a few days later when the bite of 87 happened. Uh, one of the animatronics attacked a staff member who was recently promoted to a daytime security position after the previous staff member quit. On their first day, they were randomly attacked by one of the animatronics. It, it, it's amazing that a human body can live without the frontal lobe, you know? After those two incidents, uh, the location was shut down and other franchises have been closing one after another. We got so desperate and tight with money that we pulled the old animatronics from storage and made them the headliners for the new for the you know restaurant again. Other restaurants in the franchise have been closing left and right and we here are one of the few that managed to stay open after all the bad press. Even, even so, you know, the company's on its last legs. As someone who grew up with the Fredbear franchise, and, you know, has been working for Fazbear Entertainment for a while, it's kind of a tragedy to see what was once a happy place turn into what it is nowadays. But the only reason any of this is still open is because Henry believes that we can keep going and bring Freddy's back to the glory days. Maybe one day we'll turn things around. But for 
for now, all we can do is try and bring a, a, try and bring a bit of fantasy and fun to people. The patented Fazbear way. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for listening to me, newbie. You're a, you're a good listener. As someone who really loves this franchise, it's hard to find people who I feel I can open up to about these things. And you know, but I won't take up any more of your time, any more of your night. Got important work to do. Uh, you probably want to go back to keeping an eye on the animatronics, and I need to go back to settling lawsuits. Remember, treat those things with respect that you've seen and been through a lot. Without them, there wouldn't be a pizzeria, and they are the reason people keep coming back to the restaurant. I'll see you in the morning.